like to open up the finance committee meeting um, at today's meeting. Um, we have from the finance committee, can you please announce yourself? Tom Meyer. Paul Antea. Jim Kirkendall. Dan Kennedy. Very good. And Dom. <coughs> Brian Dom is here, as is Amy Valley. And we would like to. And Brenda's here on the line. Brenda, are you there? You know what it is? The lights shine on this thing, and I can't see her. She's over okay. here. That's fine. Okay, now I can see it. All right. Um, let's open up with the agenda. Did everyone have a chance to review meeting minutes from April 26, 2022? Yes. We have a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes from I'll second and 20 seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One, two, aye. Brenda? Yes. Donna. Foster. Here comes Donna. Oh, Brenda, we lost your audio. Sorry about that. Um, when I read the, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. yes. When I, I didn't know that I missed a meeting other than the one that I told Brian or whoever I was supposed to tell um, that I was going to miss. But when I read the minutes, I do think I missed that meeting, the one in April. And so I don't think I can vote on it because it does appear that my attendance wasn't there and I don't remember the, you know, the things. So I'm not going to vote on approving the minutes. Very good. So, Donna, did you ever to read the minutes from the last meeting? They're fine. You good? Well, I call it. Okay. Yeah, she said they're fine. Donna's a yes. Okay. <laughs> Unanimous. Very good. Let's let, let's give them a minute to get back and we'll, we will continue. So because we're on Zoom, we have to do roll call folks. Oh great. Is that okay. fine? We'll do that again. Wait till Donna comes back. We'll wait till Donna comes back. Good yeah. Okay. Uh, I do a roll call. Okay, we're going to do a roll call on the acceptance of the minutes um, from April 26, 2022. Donna? Yes. Brenda? She can't. We can. Sorry. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. We have one abstaining and the rest unanimous. Okay. Um, we'll go to uh, Article 1 for the special town meeting um, regarding $38,000 um, for the First Congregational Church of Waitley. Um, Brian? Yep. Would you like to uh, sort of give, give us the background on this? Sure. And Donna can correct me. Okay. Whenever I get it wrong. Um, so it's a so it's an article for thirty-eight thousand dollars of community preservation funds. Um, and it would be a grant to the uh, the first congregational church in Wheatley to restore their the historic windows on the building. Mm -hmm. Um so it'll be subject to a grant agreement that would require and there'll likely be an amendment um, on town floor uh, to make clear that um, part of the grant agreement will be the requirement that the money be paid back if the windows are altered in a way that's not um, uh, not in line with the historic preservation guidelines, um, the Secretary of Interior standards, as are list that as it's listed in the article, um, and also. Uh, the article includes that the town would have um, the town would have a purchase right of first refusal in the event of a future sale of the building. Um, so it's thirty eight thousand dollars of CPA funds, which would be a grant to the Whitley First Congregational Church to restore the historic windows. In return, the town would um, have that twenty year payback um, if the windows were altered in a non historic way or removed, and the town would also have a right of first refusal. If, if, if they're not altered, it's just a grant, and that's 
Right. We're not going to get our money back right after that 20 year period. Yeah. So just to clarify, the town does not own the building. Correct. The congregation owns the building. Yep. Uh, I believe so, right? I think so. Yeah, the congregation is what? Maybe under 100 in numbers? That I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, 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 I'm trying to reason in my head why the town as a whole is paying for improvements to a church that's not owned by the town and the benefit would serve a small portion of the town. I um, can, well, I can I, shall I, Paul, yeah. oh, would you like me to speak to that? Since I'm yes. of the Historical Commission and the <laughs> CPC. Um, the CPA guide, and forgive me if I start coughing, I just have a cold, <laughs> but. Um, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Um, I've used whole boxes of those tests. Um, the state CPA guidelines allow grants to private entities. Um, there are many, many, many towns, many, many towns that make grants to private entities. The only ones that we've made so far have been a couple of really small ones to the historical society um, because we haven't had requests. Um, What else shall I say? We, I think we went through more process with this application than we have in, in other cases because it is the first proposal that we've had for preservation of a private, privately held entity. And in fact, the guidelines would even include a grant to a, for a building owned by an individual. Um, and we've had one proposal of that sort, but it was turned down. So over the course of the last six or eight months, first the Historical Commission spent a fair amount of time developing a new set of criteria that would have to be met before we would even accept a proposal, which we now um, put in place. I don't have those with me, sorry. But they're stricter than just we'll look at anything that is more than 50 years old. They're quite a bit stricter than that. Um, and we voted to support it. Then as a separate issue, there's the question of whether a grant can be made to a church. And Brian had um, town council look at that at our, at our request. Um, he thought that this grant would be fine because the windows are not, they don't have any religious imagery. If it was something like stained glass with overtly Christian imagery, the state of Massachusetts would not allow their money to be used for that purpose. Um, and then let's see, what was, I guess both committees were talking separately about putting more teeth in this agreement than we have say for the grants that we made to the town for various building projects. Um, the historical commission rep uh, recommended the right of first refusal. And then the condition that the CPC added which isn't quite fully spelled out. Um, we had a little bit of miscommunication in, in this version of the warrant, is that no matter who owns the building, if the windows are altered or removed, I mean, if some, if the church sold the building to a private individual who was making a house and they decided to knock those windows out and put it in a big window, they'd have to pay it back. So those are the two conditions that we added. Um, the state has, I don't remember how many towns are in the CPA now, two or, two or 300 a lot, and over 60 towns have been grants to churches, including Amherst, Deerfield, and somebody else sort of nearby. I've forgotten the third one, I apologize. Um, I mean, it actually made it more complicated that this was both from a church, well, the church <laughs> in Ridley, and and from a private entity at the same time. So we had a, we really have spent quite a lot of time in the two committees thinking about this. Um, and the, the argument about public good is that it's one of the most important buildings in, as a building in the town's historic district. You know, it matches the town hall and it's the same architect, it's the same facade. It's what makes town center. 
distinctive, really. Sorry for the long speech, but we, we, have, we have talked this through quite a many meetings. Thank you. Jim, is that? Yeah. Any follow up? Okay. I would have just um, a couple of things. Alteration of windows. Where's the oversight? Who's going to, when does that happen? Um, who's going to, who's going to, who's going to watch it? I you know, that's a problem with most of the historical society, you know, the CPC, you know. Um, I think both the CPC and the historical commission, and given that it's external and it's on, the, you know, it's on the front of the building, it would not be hard to notice if something were being changed. And the um, town purchase right of first refusal in the event of a future sale, where will that be recorded? Registering deeds. Well, deed restriction on the yeah. Property. I mean, okay. this will both will we, they both require a deed restriction. <clears throat> yeah, which the church understands. I mean, the church is whatever their governance structure is. Their yeah. committee mm -hmm. talked about that and decided they wanted to keep it. Those they approached CPC. Yes. Okay. They submit, I mean, they submitted a proposal. Yeah. So they know what they're getting themselves themselves. They do. And in fact, John Pease, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not a member of the church, so I don't remember what his role is, but he has a, some kind of governance role came to one of the meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? It is Tommy? No. I'm Dan. Pardon? Any questions uh, further? Okay, so and Brenda's home, can she hear us? I can hear you. Do okay, you have any questions in regards to this article? No. All righty, we'll take uh, we'll take a roll call vote and uh, start with Donna. Yes. Brenda. Yes. I'm yes. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. Dan. Yes. Okay. Done. Okay. All right, I will take up Article Two. Um, Brian, sorry. Um, so Article Two is to um, see if the town will to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of one thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars to pay for additional operating expenses at, for the library. Um, this came about um, there was, I guess, a miscommunication or oversight. Um, so the personnel committee, when they make salary recommendations, uh, they make salary recommendations uh, to the select board finance committee, water commissioners, and library trustees. There's certain boards that set salaries for the pay rates of their employees. Um, and there was uh, a recommendation from the personnel committee to the library trustees um, that wasn't acted upon prior to the, the, the budget being finalized and adopted. Um, and I think it was it was realized and then wanted to sort of make it right for um, Cindy as the library director. Um, so they voted um, to increase her pay from 2362 to 2483, which is in line with the recommendations. Um, but it would require you know the additional amount of money to be made available in their budget to make that happen. Is that about that's about right. Exactly. Yeah, the, the personnel committee is she's like 7.63 percent below the average of the 10 towns of similar size um so we we thought we should bring her up to the average okay open that up to the floor any questions in regards to these monies oh, who has the library donna dan said no jim no you good and brenda any questions no question, thanks. Tom? No. I'm good. Okay, we'll do a uh, take a roll call vote again. Donna? Yes. Brenda? Yes. I'm yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's recommended. Article three? Article three. Let's see if the count. Go ahead. Let me 
Um, see the town will vote to transfer the sum of 3464 from available funds to pay for the cost of accessibility improvements to the library, including but not limited to construction administration services. So I'll give a, a summary of, of how this came about and you guys can jump in if you want. Um, so um, it was a library accessibility project that was meant to uh, make the library uh, handicap accessible. Um, it involved, most of it involved um, the installation of a lift, which is installed and the renovation of the, the restaurants in the lower level. Um, and the project is completed, right? The project's fully completed. Um, but back in, was it this past, this, it was this past December, right? I think when this, when the trustees were working on the, on the variance, right? right. Um, so an issue came up with um, the accessibility of the stacks in the library, the shelf. Um, it doesn't, they don't meet the minimum width, I guess, so width, right? It doesn't meet the width that would be required under ADA for um, those, the shelf to be, to be considered accessible. Um, so back in December, there was some work that was done by Jones Whitsett um, to prepare a variance um, that was going to be submitted to the Recovering Architectural Access Board, which makes determinations. It's essentially a waiver from the ADA requirements. Um, and that some of that work was done. It wasn't realized that the work that they were doing was considered outside of the scope of the of the existing contract for construction administration. Um, so um, they were finishing up the, the project and then there were there was an additional, you know, two invoices that came that were that were outside of essentially they they finished the project and they still have about seven hundred dollars left. And then these two invoices came for construction administration services um, that they weren't anticipating. But looking back, what had happened was uh, two of the invoices or one invoice for the architectural access board variance waiver was actually paid for out of the project funds. Mm -hmm. um, so it created a deficit actually in the, in the, in the project budget. Um, and then this is the amount, uh, this is the amount that would be needed to, to, to finish those, those uh, invoices. Uh, I've, I've looked at it many different ways and I, I think the money is owed to Jones, uh, to Jones what's it. Um, so that's what the article. What was were. that total project? Do you remember? Well, Ben. Well, it's uh, 150, 159, 160,000. 159 in oversight of 3,400 a day. That's not bad. It's not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> when you do future projects, you gotta make a, a wider or um, a wider gap for um, contingencies. The variance. Contingencies. Yeah. Um, because that's, we would have been fine if we didn't, in field conditions, discover mm -hmm. concrete beam that went across the entire front of the library, which we could not cut into, and therefore had to move the whole damn thing three inches, oh. which cost $11,000. Yeah. Because it's a two story shaft. There you go. And that was and your then, contingency fund. Or and then, well, that was, yeah, that was, yeah. that was. Ooh, everything was gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there were additional unanticipated requirements related to the, I, I'll say, that, related to the fire system yeah. um, that the fire chief had requested that were not anticipated, um, which also ate some of their some of their project budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, it's good that I think those things are in. It's better for the library. Absolutely. But, um, they were rec they were recommendations that. that the, that, yeah. that the trustees made um, forceful recommendations. Well, it was all torn apart. So, sure. Yeah, that's the time to do it. Not, yeah. Yep. Donna? Oh, I have a question. Um, uh, did our contract with Jones Whitson, was it a flat management fee? Um, I, I don't remember. I, so, my, my question I, I've already heard Brian say that he thinks that their billing was reasonable. I'm I'm surprised if the contract we had with them did not require them to alert you at the time that they did the work, that they were considering it over and above. Well, Don, the other thing is that Margo retired 
30 per project. Margo Jones. So you had a change of staff. Well, not a change of staff, but just meant that she was our, our go to contact person from the get go. She did the initial analysis for us in the feasibility study, and then that changed. So, yeah, it's hard. I mean, I know when, when Dan and I were working with them on the town hall, we had a bigger project, obviously, yeah. but we had a flat fee. And I just remember us saying, no, no, no. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I think that. No. Yeah, the contract was for like 28.5 them total. So yeah. I have from Joseph. Right there. I mean, my question is just about this the technically is not about the $3,500. Yeah, this, <laughs> this technically falls under that amount because they build outside of the contract for the variance, which we didn't realize that paid. Yeah. I see. But I also want you to know that when those change orders came, Bob and Jim Ross yeah. were tigers. I mean, I'm sure the, the, that that initial three-inch bump out was the initial cost was yeah. four or five grand more than we finally um, got them to agree to. So we tried very hard to be good stewards of that money, but just yeah, yeah our thirty some hundred short. Yeah, they did some crazy change orders at first. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. And of course, there's always asbestos. Sure. Well, you know, certainly an explanation behind it. Yeah. And um, are there any further questions in regards to these monies? 34, 64. Okay. We will take a roll call vote. Um, again, Donna? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Paul, yes. Tom, yes. Jim, yes. Dan, yes. Okay. Thank you all so much. Very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thanks for that's going to come yep. from. Um, I think free cash. So free, free cash. Was, yeah. Free cash. Free cash was just certified at. So can I uh, 90. just um you could prior to uh, getting to the next article, can I circle back to the first one on um the first article? It's, it's just kind of bugging me regarding the um the right of first refusal. Um don't you think there should be language in here that states how and when and where um, this will be recorded and by who? In other words, whether it should go to uh, be registered at the. Uh, it is going to be, there's going to be a deed restriction on it. Yeah. But you want it to say in this article yeah. that there's a, there right. will be a. Right, deed restriction recorded right. in the registry. Recorded deed. by town council or in uh, who that town council, what the town council needed their name in here. And, um, or is that making it too complicated? Well, no, too wordy. You, see, it's not. you can never, I'm always about who do we go and see when things don't go right? They're going to be long gone. Well, yeah, but. Somebody's going to go and see it. Well, if it's in the if it's recorded in the registry of deeds, but here you let the town people know okay. that it will be recorded in where it will be recorded and by whom. Well, I really don't think by whom counts this because if it's going to be recorded, it's, it's done through the town's legal staff. Yeah. Then let that say it, the town council. Okay. Want to? Are we going to amend this? It would have to be amended on the yeah. county floor. I mean, we have to. It's already we have to, we have to amend it anyway. I had actually brought the wording that we sent over the front uh, okay. yesterday um, by adding, I'm reading the whole thing to you, but everybody adding explicitly the phrase requiring that the funds be repaid if and what. You know. yeah. Okay. Um, but 
the other thing I didn't say, the other sort of technical thing we got talking about in the CPC is we we will have an actual grant agreement for this grant and for any other grants to private entities, which we haven't done with the grants to the town for, you know, which mm -hmm. have been small and large and for Lucky Park and, you know, a whole lot of different things town hall, that we'll have. Well, Town Hall was the biggest, the biggest one, part. for sure. Yeah. Um, and we've gotten examples of the, the kinds of agreements other towns have used. I mean, that doesn't have to be in the warrant. I'm just telling you that. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, so this would have to be amended. So it's going to be amended with that language. It'll be a motion on uh, town meeting floor to amend it. Okay. Yeah. So couldn't we have? The... Yeah, I think you would put something. Yeah, after the in a town purchase, the town purchase right of first refusal to record it in the type of registry of deeds. Okay. Hi, this is Brenda. I. I hi. I'm still yeah, hi. learning how you guys. I, I'm still learning how you guys do things, but I do think that's an excellent point, Paul, because otherwise it's just in some article voted 20 years ago. It's completely unenforceable against any good faith buyer who has no knowledge of it in, in the church. So, yeah, I think, it, I think it's an excellent point, Paul, is what I'm trying to say. Good. I'm glad the support there. Um, all right. We good at that? All right. We're good. All right, let's move on to um, Article 4, the graves. Brian. Yeah, let me just share this again. So we're going to figure out why this exists and why we vote it every year. Um, but my suspicion is that, um, so every year we vote um, as part of um, the article on the annual town meeting warrant that uh, sets the uh, pay rates of elected officials. There's a there's always been this opening graves fee, you know, thing at the bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. um, my sis, I I'm going to work with town council to figure out if we really need it. Uh, my my suspicion is that, and it's I think the cemetery commissioners share this thought is that, um, and it's actually their uh, their thought was their idea is that. It was likely set in the fee that we paid for a cemetery commissioner working as a sexton to open the grave because mm -hmm. um, they're elected and then that would be sort of a fee that we're paying to them. Yep. Um, the cemetery commissioners don't do that anymore. It's contracted out. Um, so it's it's unlikely that we would actually you know need to have this going forward. Um, it's it's within the cemetery commissioners. Um, responsibilities and, and their authority to hire contractors who open a grave and whatever the, the fee that they negotiate subject to you know procurement laws and everything which this doesn't really come close to yeah. Uh, yeah. to tripping um, is, is really within their authority um, so what happened is that the contractor that they use uh, raised the price from 650 to 750 and they still um, they still sort of feel obligated to um, amend what was voted at the annual town meeting for, for fiscal year 23 to make it match to what they're paying. And then we'll look at it, whether it really needs to be on there. So it's okay. just, it's just, a, it's just changing the fee to match what they're currently paying. Okay. Um, so the feeling is that this is really not something the town for. Right. Okay. Unless we were, unless they were doing the work themselves. themselves. Yeah. And, and, okay. and, uh, all right. Years ago, they did. Right. Yeah. So now the billing goes from the uh, service parties to, or rather, from the contracted, the contractor to the town, and then to the individuals being buried, or, um, or. It would be so. So typically, it would be the estate paying the seven hundred fifty dollars yeah. into the cemetery revolving fund, mm -hmm. and then paying out the town would pay out of the cemetery revolving it's fund to the contractor. To, okay. All right. Okay. Do we need to vote on this? Yeah. Well, we do. Okay. Are there any further questions regarding the opening of Graves Street, or as, or 
please. This is for casket. Yes, that's why it's yeah. worded like that because if it's a cremation, it's another story. Okay, right. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Um, we will take a roll call. Vote again, Donna. Yes. And Brenda. Yes. Um, yes. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. Dan. Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Article five. See the town vote to transfer the sum of seventy-eight sixty-nine for vehicle stabilization fund to pay for the purchase of a new hybrid police cruiser for the police department or take any other action relative there too. They are not that cheap. Really? You can't you can't buy one for seven eight hundred bucks. What happened? So uh, what happened was Ford is no longer making FY twenty two hybrid cruisers. Um, and the ones that were available, they had, according to the dealer, um, MGH, the board's not making any more, and they're not making any more available um, for purchase. So um, we had appropriated uh, $55,000 for the purchase of a hybrid police cruiser at the last annual town meeting with the idea and the the dealer has to, you know, it's a, there's a, there's essentially a waiting list that the town get on for cruisers. Um, the town was on the, on the waiting list to get the, the, uh, the 22 and it's obviously not available. So, um, there were two options at that point. Um, nothing has been, um, really nothing has obviously been decided, but so there were, um, there's essentially two options that, that, the town has, or that the police department has. Um, and I'll show you the comparison here. Um, so the two options were the 2022 gas model or, or essentially we'll wait a little bit longer for a 23 hybrid. Um, and the select board had, had talked with uh, uh, Chief Sabine about this. And this, uh, the figures that are here were provided by the town of Deerfield, uh, who has both, they have both hybrid mm -hmm. and uh, gas cruisers. Mm -hmm. um, so we just sort of did a simple calculation, total cost of ownership. We're just looking at the bottom here. Um, so it's just the cost of the vehicle plus the five-year fuel costs based on the, you know, the sort of the, the real world and the, you know, all that, that Deerfield had given us. Um, and over the five year period, um, this is what the savings would calculate out to be. That's just based on um, that's just based on, on vehicle purchase price and, and mm -hmm. five year fuel costs. Um, I'm told there's there's uh, there's sort of more savings, I guess, with a hybrid in terms of uh, maintenance and things like that. I don't own a hybrid. I don't know. Um, what but, did you, what do you feel say about the maintenance between those two? I mean, I know. Right? Probably they can't. Probably the no maintenance. Um, I don't. They, they didn't. They didn't really say too much about it. Sort of generally speaking, that um, when the car. The Deer, where is the town of Deerfield buying gas for three and a quarter a gallon? That is just issues in that. I was just going to say that's the kind of magic. Yeah, <laughs> that right now. Yeah. Um. So it it seemed to make financial sense to to wait a little bit longer stretch out the existing, you know, the existing vehicle that they have um, and then purchase the, the 2023 hybrid when it becomes available, which will likely be, I think it will be sometime probably after yeah, exactly. July, um, you know, further into the fall. So, I mean, of next year, of next year. So it's stretching. I, I mean, it, it's good in the sense that we're we're sort of getting more use from the from the existing know, from the existing cruiser, yeah. um, and then we would need this, these additional funds for the replacement. And are those prices lock, locked in, or are we? Um, that's a good question. I believe that they are. Okay. Any other any questions uh, regarding this? Um, it looks to me to be a break even, yeah. but you know, 
there seems to be some sense of heading towards a hybrid. So, yeah. All right, we'll take a roll call vote. Brenda, do you have any questions about this um, vehicle? No, thank you, Paul. Okay. All righty, then we'll take the roll call vote. We'll start with Donna. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. Dan. Yes. Okay, Un unanimous for um, Article 5. Okay, now we move on to Articles 6 and 7. Uh, we need two thirds vote. Oh, that's for the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Never mind. All right. Uh, <laughs> I still need two thirds vote. Article 6. Um, boy, that's long. Can you condense that for us, Brian? Sure. <laughs> so, the fallout, uh, one of the fallouts from the opioid crisis was that. Um, a bunch of state attorney generals sued opioid manufacturers and distributors. Um, class action lawsuit, and the town the, the town became a party to that, um, and became part of the class. So there was uh, there were two settlements that that were entered into by um, one by the uh, distributors and one by the. Uh, Opioids, or producers or, or manufacturers of, of, opioid, of opioids. Um, so the funds that the town will receive have been spread out over a long period of time. So all in the town will will receive sixty six thousand uh, dollars between twenty twenty. We got our first payment in in twenty three between twenty twenty three and twenty thirty eight. Um, so it's, it's small dollars over a long period of time. That's not something that, that, that we could have much say in. Yeah. Um, I think it might've been the distributor payment. I think we may have lumped together. Um, but that's, that's going to be the total amount. So what the article does is, um, uh, the general rule uh, for accounting is that any revenue that comes in goes to the general fund um, unless there's a uh, unless there's a, a state law or a special act that that the town has accepted mm -hmm. that allows it to go somewhere else um, so that's what we're doing here we're setting up um, a special purpose stabilization fund um, and we are so we can set up the special purpose stabilization fund and then the town can vote to dedicate the revenue from the identified sources directly into that fund. And it's useful uh, to set up these types of funds when the use of the funds that are coming in are restricted. Um, so the use of these funds is, is restricted to um, activities to abate the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. So it's really not general fund revenue that we could use to mm -hmm. um, whatever you want to say. No. Spend as we wish. Right. We we so you're earmarked you know, for certain things. A new cruiser. A new cruiser. Yeah, no. Um, so it's it's really an accounting mechanism that helps the town accountant sort of keep the money separate. Okay. And then we can spend um out of it. But because it's a stabilization fund, it still requires a two-thirds vote to vote the money out. Um I mean, I don't expect that I, I could be wrong, but I don't expect it to be very controversial. It's likely going to be related to some type of, you know, health programs related to yeah. helping people with addiction or something along those lines. Um, so this this article creates the account, um, and it allow and it dedicates 100% of that money received from the judgments and settlements into that fund. It still requires an appropriation to get it out. All right. Any questions regarding this article? Um, I have a Donna? practical question. So, so it's only sixty six thousand over fifteen years, but, less, right? but could we use it for something like paying for the cost of our public health nurse, or do we have to? Will we have to do something different and additional? I mean, either is fine with me. I'm just asking. <laughs> so, um, it has to be related to all people. Yeah, if if I but my I think if you make if you could connect the two, depends on what my steward is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
but it's something to keep in mind as, as we see budgets come through that if there's a component of that, you know, that budget that we might want to fund out of that. Any further questions? No. Okay, then we will take a roll call vote on Article 6. Donna? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. Article 6 is recommended. Article 7. So everything that I said, just said, replace opioid with cannabis impact. <laughs> yeah. um, again, it's going to set up the same type of, of fund mm -hmm. um, community impact fee if we ever get any as a town uh, which I'm not optimistic about based on the, the changes to the cannabis legislation that, that have passed um, cannabis impact fee money has a restricted purpose it needs to be directly related to uh, the impacts um, of the establishment on the community Mm -hmm. um, so it's not general fund revenue. This that is different from uh, retail excise tax. Okay, um, that was one of my questions. Okay. Right. So the select board did have a conversation about would it be appropriate for the retail excise tax to go into this fund, um, and they did not want to do that because you know the excise tax money that comes in is unrestricted okay. from the sale of cannabis. Community impact fee money is restricted, um, and it's gotten. Um, it's gotten more difficult and it's going to be a lot harder to collect it and spend it. Um, and that's, that's a conversation for a, uh, for another night, but that it's, it's harder. I, I'm not sure if it's even worth it to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, with the tracking and documentation of costs and in, we essentially have to invoice the, the, the establishment for the, you know, the cost of, of the, on the impact, so yeah. it's not something that we're very well set up to do. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of time to do, but anyways, um, okay. this would set up the same type of account um, to help us track and, and keep those funds separate. If we didn't have these funds, if we didn't have these funds, we'd have to vote them out of free cash essentially every year. We'd have to take the amount, well, I'll use opioids because it's easier. We'd have to take the amount that we got from, from the settlements. We'd have to put an article on the account of warrant to appropriate X amount of dollars, you know, four thousand dollars from free cash um, to whatever to the the hell to do the, the, the board board self just or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's easier to keep them separate for the funds to just you know, roll over. Get your fiscal year, fiscal year. He's got it. Okay. Any questions regarding Article Seven? If not, we will have a roll call vote on Article Seven. Donna. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. yes. Dan. Yes. Very good. Article seven passes. And um, that, looks, uh, that looks like it for the town warrant. Um, okay. All right. On our agenda, uh, budget planning for fiscal year 2024. I just put that there as a. Oh, as a oh, it's like, yeah, a surprise. Oh, I so you had something in the oh, something good. No, I, I know you want to talk about it, so I wanted to make sure you know. Okay. Um, well, yeah, let's make sure everybody on board for the whole year. Let's, let's, let's get that one. Anybody heading out of town? Okay. Um, last year, what was our preferred night? Was it Thursday night or was it Tuesday night or Wednesday night? Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesdays. Tuesday nights. Okay, we'll try to maintain that. Is everybody good with uh, Tuesday nights? Just keep in mind that Select Board changed their meeting to Tuesday nights. Right. So we'll have to, so have we'll to, have to go out and sit down. Yeah. Or if we're going to meet with them. We don't want to. We don't want to interrupt their meeting. So, probably. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll be able to schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Schedule Just uh, so we're thinking about Wednesday night now. No. No. Tuesday. We're still with Tuesday, so we'll just have to be the opposite. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we'll try to do Tuesday nights. Okay. And we'll uh, try to.
try to put a schedule together in the not too distant future, Brian, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, just um, update for us. Anything going on with the culvert bridge um, coming down? Christian Lane. Christian Lane. Christian Lane. Um, no, not really. No. Okay. I think it's not, it does not have a favorable placement on the uh, last DOT. Let me, let me make sure. We're not in a good position on the on the sort of the bridge rating. And by that, I mean not in a good position to get funding. Um, it wouldn't be a priority. Why? So, and I don't know the exact engineering reasons for this. The weight rating of the bridge did not change. Um, what I'm told is that on one the side that's closed, um, there were some, I think they were abutments or something, um, that were deteriorated. Um, so because it's down to one lane of traffic, it can still, so essentially it could probably go half the weight, but in terms of you only have a one vehicle go over it at one time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, only it doesn't change. The, the it doesn't change the bridge rating, hmm. um, and it's it, yeah it has it has some traffic over it, um, but uh, in a statewide you know bridge rating that, that yeah. takes into account usage and, hmm. and traffic and things like that, it doesn't rate okay. very high. Um, we're still waiting to see what happens with all the federal infrastructure money and how that filters through. Yeah, um, yeah, so. There's okay. a lot, a lot worse bridges in in the state than that one. Is kind of what you're saying. There are. Uh, well, that's what we're told. That's what you're told. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the first thing would be would be design. That's the first thing that we need to, to start yeah. addressing. Um, has there been any movement by the select board regarding the demi the property, the demio property on five and ten? No. Um, it's. There were it, um, one of the select board members wants to investigate it as a potential location for the highway garage for, uh, highway for a new highway garage. It's right next to Memphis. Um So that's sort of where it's sort of stated at that point. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's interesting. So who's moving ahead with that effort to? Gather the information needed to make a decision on that, so we can go forward with another, in another direction. Yeah, that doesn't work out. Um, so at this point, it's just been uh, Fred Barron and Keith that have had discussions around that. Um, there's not any sort of formal committee or anything that is. It's that's just something that's getting thrown around. Is, is a survey going to be needed, regardless of what happens? And if so, can that get started? That's what that's what was being discussed. Whether it made sense to do, uh, it, it would be a wetland delineation, and then you could sort of put out. You could sort of map out where on the where on the site things like the the septic and if it could go. I don't think that site is big enough. It'd be my first. Yeah. You no, know, look at what we got now and picture that. Just even that, which is not adequate, up there, and that's got the septic system in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I think it's a challenging location. Yeah, and we got a salt shed. You know, we got piles of stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that that lot is bigger than I think, but I don't. I, yeah. I think you're surrounded by wetlands on three sides. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. Uh, that would be a challenge. That and and I don't see the town um, being receptive to having two public work sites. So you'd have to close one down, decide what you're going to do with it. Yeah, and then move everything to the other side. That's that's and yeah. You don't want to be having your trucks at up at the mails and having your salt shed down here next to ninety one. And right. Yeah. Anyway. 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 Okay, that's good. And uh, progress on the center school. So currently, there's a request for proposals out um, for the long-term lease and redevelopment of the center school. 
Um, so what's what's being what's being sought is um, somebody who's interested in redeveloping the center school and entering into a long term lease arrangement mm -hmm. for whatever period of years would be desired mm -hmm. um, and likely what would it would be leased out at a at a at a lower rent. Um, so whoever wants to redevelop it could recoup. Um, you know, recoup the cost of, of fixing up the building. Sure. They would have the right to use it for as many years as under the lease, subject to zoning requirements and things like that. Is there a time frame on that RFP? Um, responses are due sometime in January, uh, January 30th. So it was, it was put out for 90 days. Okay. And that's available on the website if anybody wants to. So you could take a look at it. Good. And then if, if we don't get any responses for that, then we'll have to well, it'll be another discussion about how to move forward. Because I mean, I don't think we can keep the building closed off like that. No, right. in, in in the condition that it's in. Um so okay. we'll do some from all we'll lose everything. Yeah. We'll just lose everything if that's the case. Okay, um just uh, one last uh, point of discussion that I just want to Keep everybody in the loop on is that one of the um, one of the struggles that we have every single year as a finance committee is um, the receipt of the um, school budgets and when we get the school budgets and how much time we have to look at the school budgets and how much impact we we can have on the budgets given the fact that the budgets are over fifty percent of our own town budget. Um, much of that is due to timing, the timing of when the schools have to put the budgets together, time frame for the schools to um, deliver those budgets to the towns. And in talking with Brian, um, it is, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Brian, but um, school budgets have to be delivered to town floor or have to be ready for town floor 45 days before the meeting. Or frontier, I believe. Right, yeah. the frontier. frontier. And, and normally we get them both together. Um, so if you think about that, the biggest problem is when, when the actual towns have their annual meetings. And if you have an annual meeting in April, that means the schools have to have their budgets together sometime in February. And, it, and they're only starting on those things in the end of December, January. January. So there's always this rush to get it in. Uh, Conway has moved their meeting to June. Um, I had a meeting about two weeks ago here with um, the um, um, the chairs of the four towns, actually the three towns, Sunderland couldn't make, make it, but she's in the loop. Um, and we have a, um, and we're going to try to approach the towns so that we move our annual meetings to a point in time where it allows finance committees to take a look at the biggest part of their budget and have a little more input as to what those budgets are. Um, but the first thing we have to do is to have a calendar that allows that kind of you know, input. So, um, so I bring this out in front of you know to everybody to to let you know where things are, and um, and we're also in, in agreement that we would like to see the budgets the frontier budget in its entirety. We know that we get our portion, but in order for them to give us our portion and everyone else, there has to be an entire budget. So that has to be there. And uh, and we'd also like to have um, the central office entire budget as well. Um, so I don't know how you guys think about that or if you have anything to add or you think- I agree with that. I'm, our town meeting is, First part of June, anyway, right? It's been moved on a yearly basis, so yeah, it's been um, kind of floating around. But it, it's still on on the books. It would still be the last Tuesday in April. 
you know, but that can be moved. Uh, again, like what Paul said, it's if three of us, if three towns move it and one doesn't, it doesn't matter. They got doesn't to matter. It's got to be unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, the schools are still under that time frame. Yeah. Where they have to get it in. So, um, so the um, finance chair in Deerfield is going to approach Deerfield to see if they could do something. And uh, so we're waiting here um, to see what that's all about. Okay. So. Just want to bring you up to the speed on that. And uh, any other questions? Any other thoughts? I got a couple. Go ahead. Free cash is five ninety. What was it last year? Do you remember? Was that six twenty? Yeah. All right. We kept it, and it was lower. Um, so we we brought it down a little bit lower. If you remember, we moved. We brought it down to like ninety thousand. Yeah, at the end of that, because we moved funds out of free cash into, cash into okay, so that, 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 that's part of the reason out. that it's at 590 and not we didn't carry over as much. Right. And there's still about 109,000 that's in the that's still in the uh, the early heat park uh accessibility account that okay. will get moved back into free cash that will contribute to try to free cash. Yeah. Uh, uh what about the use of the excavator by the water department? Is it is the highway department billing the water department for the use of that excavator? Keith had mentioned something to me about wanting to pursue a IMOU or something What's along it? the lines of that, but it hasn't been. There's nothing in place right now. They in the beginning they wanted to get in on that. I remember. And then they did not. And I know. Somewhere in the minutes, it says if they use that thing, they're going to pay for it. They didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to get in. They wanted to, then they didn't, which, you know, that's their prerogative. I understand that. Now they've used it to put the new pump house in. They've used it at least twice to tie in two different tie ins that they got going on. And that thing cost us $200,000 or whatever it was. And I think they should be paying for it. There's, I was under the impression they were. Yeah. There's going to be a, I think there's going to be a, a, a larger discussion about who's paying for what in relation to the enterprise fund. There are things that, that the town, there are things that the town should rightfully be paying for to the water department enterprise fund. And there are things probably that the enterprise fund water well, department should maybe, be paying Maybe this is a walk, maybe it's a wash. Um, I don't know. But no, nobody really knows, right? <laughs> one of the issues is that, and it, it, one of the issues that has been brought to my attention is that we don't have water meters on some of our town buildings. Right. We don't have water meters on the, on the fire station. We don't have water meters in the highway garage. We don't have water meters. Um, in the police station at the town hall, and we don't have water meters school. at the elementary school, oh, which okay. I assume is a big user of the owner. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah. that is, see, I never, you know, that's I that not, stuff that never gets discussed. I did not know that until two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> so it's unbilled revenue for the enterprise fund. Okay. Which, if I'm an enterprise fund advocate, I'm saying that's a big problem because yeah. I want revenue. Yeah. And, um, but from if I'm the town, I say thank you and, and uh, keep my mouth quiet. Yep. Um, okay. But I, but I, I see both sides, um, and I open my mouth. So, um, you know, it's the cemeteries aren't are metered, and any any obviously any hydrant that's used to fill up a fire truck is not metered. Um, so yeah, but that's water, that's public to me. Public safety. Like, what are you going to, if there's a fire at the Waitley Inn, again, you're yeah. going to charge the Waitley Inn because you used the water, the town water to put the fire out? That's So it's the, no, I, that's not what I'm, I, I'm suggesting. Uh, I'm saying that only the water users pay for the water that comes out of the hydrant. Right. So if you want to, if we want to put in our enterprise fund hat, we would say, well, that, that water, you that River. used to put out for somebody else's house is paid for only by the water users. Um, there's a there, there's just all these times where somebody you know one's doing one thing for the other, and it's just something that we sort of need to wade through. They pay you know they pay an overhead charge for 
you know, the, some of my time, some of Lynn's time, right. you know, right. and it's, I, I think it's something that needs to be revisited. If there's offsets that need to happen for different types of water, however that, whatever is agreed upon, I think it, it, it's time for a discussion to have on that. Yeah. Um, and there will be a cost, uh, you know, Wayne was telling me that under the regulations, a one inch water meter is provided by the water department, but anything that's, you know, over a, a two inch, a two inch service pipe is, is paid for by the, by the property owner. Um, and on ones that are not for, for, um, whatever residential use or whatever, any backflow devices. And so there will be a cost if, if that's the way that, that, the, the that it's all like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's part of a larger discussion that needs to happen. And, and it, I agree the use of the excavator should be, should be part of that. Well, um, mm -hmm. you know, I was just thinking about, you know, the, I was saying the use of the excavator, but the three times that I can think of the, the two tie-ins and the pump station, it wasn't just Keith and the excavator. There right. were two or three highway department employees, trucks, you know, everything is there. Yeah. It's not just the excavator. It's the, you know, the whole highway department is there technically working for the water department yeah now i didn't know we were getting free water out of the deal right in, so, in the water merger there was there was it was in-kind services so that we didn't pay the the towns a customer didn't pay the hookup fees um but i know that there have been other times where the excavators been used um so it's it was, part of that i think it was so discussion. that the new clients didn't pay higher Fees. We did pay for Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. The town, the town did not pay. Yeah. Yeah. The town did not. For town buildings. For town buildings. The mm -hmm. five connections at town center. Yeah. Right. Did not pay. Hookup and fees. as they so, say, a lot of water has run under the bridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, since we're talking about the enterprise fund, I was recently told, and this may not be true, that the water department has not raised its fees in decades no, it's been true. raised once since i've been here yeah, yeah they raised it once two, two years, ago. years ago i think so yeah but prior to that it had been in i see right it hadn't been raised when did they put it in dan 1990 yeah it hadn't been raised and it had not been raised for 30 or 35 years so so and they're currently there's currently a um they've hired um in response to a request from mass the EP, they've hired a um a firm to do a it, it, it's it's a bigger look at their operations, but part of that includes a, a water rate survey um focused on um operational costs and future capital costs, and they're gonna recommend what the you know what the rate should be to support. To, for the water department to support itself as an independent mm -hmm. operation. The original argument, I you know, when they, when the, they first started pumping their own water, I don't remember the numbers, but they were charging X amount per gallon or thousand or whatever it was, and it was pretty high. Mm -hmm. And their argument for not raising it for thirty-five years or whatever was that in the beginning. The people that were hooking up were paying a lot more money than anybody else around. Well, 35 years later, it's funny. Times times had changed and they were kind of forced into raising it. All right. How's there, how do all the other budgets in town look? Um, no problems. They're good in the, they're good okay. for 23 now. All right. Good. Yeah. So like the one of the things I thought of was the fuel account. I suppose it's yeah, up and down. I make a motion we adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. All those in favor? Roll call. Uh, roll call. You got a roll call. Okay. Brenda? Uh, uh, yes. Donna? Yes. Paul, yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. You sure? Now we can discuss this other thing. Shut this thing.